Hey everyone, welcome back to Coloring in It's Easy to Color. I am of course your host and your artist, Lisa Mitrokin. We've already colored a couple of pages in this book. We did the fairy and the iridescent beetle. And every time I push this paper a little bit more, and today I will show you my ultimate paper test in this book on these purple crystals. As always, all of my books are published both in a PDF format, which you can get on Etsy, and actually in print, which you can get on Amazon. Now, Amazon paper has been a topic of huge debate for years among colorists, with a consensus that it's not the best quality paper, and today I am going to put that statement to the test. Having played in this book a little bit already, I have come to the conclusion that the Amazon paper has actually greatly improved over the years. So all of the new prints that are being done are being produced on nicer paper. On previous shows, I mentioned that this new and improved paper is very friendly for pencils, but probably won't take paint or markers. And today I'm going to prove myself wrong. I am going to add not just acrylic paint highlights, but an actual layer of acrylic paint and even using water. Additionally, I will test this paper by adding some black marker work as well. So buckle up, let's see how it goes. As always, when working in a physical copy of a book, it's important to put a protective layer of paper underneath the page that we're working on, especially if we're planning to really torture this page with different media. For those of you who are just joining the show, this book is printed on cream paper, which is extremely unusual. And I'm very excited that this is now an option with Amazon prints that I can offer even the physical versions of my book on toned paper, lightly toned, but still toned. So for the first step in my test, I will pre-color everything that is crystals with white charcoal. White charcoal is a great underlayer for colored pencils, but it may make things a little bit more difficult depending on your coloring style. If white charcoal is a little bit tricky for you to use, I would recommend still doing the underpainting layer in white, but instead of white charcoal using a white Prismacolor pencil. The difficult part, or rather the challenging part with working with white charcoal, all depends on the kind of pencils that you're using over it. Most colored pencils on the market are wax pencils and can be a little slippery, a little bit glidey. So sometimes you may be able to actually push the pigment around. And depending on how much pressure you apply in your coloring style, that may actually take some of the pigment away. However, that may also be a desirable effect for some of us, especially with gradient transitions on crystalline structures like this crystal cluster. So every single effect that happens with the media that we work with can be seen as a blessing or as a curse. The art part of this art project, of this coloring project, is being able to manipulate our tools to our own advantage and to make the best of them. As I mentioned in the beginning of the show, this is a test and I'm actually pushing my boundaries here and I'm pushing the boundaries of the paper here. So I'm intentionally making things as difficult for myself as possible to see if I can work through this and to see how far I can push this paper within reason, of course, and using it smartly. I will be giving you various tips along the way on how to apply as much media to this as possible and in as many layers as possible. And why is that important? Because the best results take time and layers, 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 layers. I preach my layering technique in all of my courses in the academy. You've heard me say it time and time again here on YouTube, layers are the key to professional coloring. Please keep in mind that this coloring, this page of crystals with the background took me six hours to complete and I work extremely fast. So obviously this show isn't going to be six hours. I'm going to try to cram it all in in under half an hour, hopefully even less than that. But I will show you every single step of the way. And I will be sharing the full recording of this video with my channel members, my YouTube channel members next month. So not February, but March. I am now 20 minutes into my coloring and my white layer is complete. 
Let's pause for a second and assess. This is something that I like to do in my courses in the academy. I like to pause my project and have the students take a look at the screen and do the assessment with me. Let's see what this white charcoal actually did to our crystals. Because obviously we don't just want to test the paper. If I wanted to just test the paper, I would do splashes and doodles on one of the empty pages in the back of the book. But I didn't do that. I chose a nice, beautiful page to color. So we might as well take this time to also learn a little bit about the beauty and the technique of coloring crystals. So looking at the screen right now, the white charcoal has already made the structure look very shiny and very crystalline. Notice how the original lines on the page are printed in warm gray on our cream paper. And now adding our white charcoal over everything that's crystals turned the warm gray lines into cool gray lines. Very cool. They almost look blue. It is an incredibly attractive look. And this is also laying the groundwork for any color crystal. We can go light or dark. We can make this a completely transparent quartz crystal cluster at this point. Or we can go full out and make this a really deep purple amethyst, which is what I'm going to do. There are two ways of approaching coloring crystal clusters. I will show you both of them in this video. The first way is to color one of these crystals completely. And that way you test your color palette and you set the goal for yourself for the intensity of every single color and the overall level of contrast. And once you have that one crystal complete, you use it as a visual reference. So every time you add new colors to the other crystals, you know exactly how intense that color needs to be. And you also know the exact colors that you already used and clearly they work. So following that method, you can complete the entire cluster crystal by crystal until it is done. I only used a handful of colors on this, but I established a very strong color gradient. I have pure white and pure black and a bunch of purple and magenta colors in between. Now I have my color guide and I can apply it to the rest of this composition. Personally, this isn't my favorite method to work with. I find this method to be quite distracting. This crystal stands out to me like a sore thumb. And, it, and it's hard to judge if it even matches my overall mood yet because it's too stark, it's too bright, it's too vibrant, the contrast is very high. If you look at it next to my complete page, the look is quite different. When you look at a finished version of the coloring, everything is nicely balanced and nothing stands out this sharply. At this stage, this level of intensity in terms of color and contrast may be a little distracting. Yet a lot of colorists find this method very helpful. So I don't know which one is best for you. I like to just show you all the available options. So for me, I prefer the second method, which I will show you now. And that is systematically layering layers of color. So for my first layer, I will use my magenta color and I will apply it to all of the crystals in the cluster. And I will proceed color by color to apply the same effect to everything as a single wash, as a continuous project, the same exact way as I did it with the first crystal. And as you can see this way, our crystals materialize on the page all at once in a more gradual and a more natural way. Now, again, this isn't for everyone. Some people don't like this approach. Some of my students don't like doing the color by color systematic layering because they can't really see the final outcome in their mind yet. And there's nothing wrong with that. If that's you, that crystal by crystal is a better way of approaching this coloring. For me, I'm the other way around. I like to do layer by layer on the entire thing. And of course, a combination of the two strategies also work, which is technically what I'm doing right now on the screen. I, I am using both of the methods at once. I created my original standalone crystal and I am using him as a guide for the rest of them. It's just that I'm doing the rest of them all at once and not one by one. 
The reason that I prefer my method better, method number two of systematic constructive layering, is because that allows me to add additional overall effects such as a gradient transition on the entire crystal cluster. In my vision, the cluster is a little bit lighter towards the bottom and a little bit more intense in color towards the top. If I were to do this entire cluster one crystal at a time, it would be a little bit difficult to keep that overall gradient actually happening. So again, consider what your final outcome is going to be. Now, without getting into too much detail about how to color crystals, which by popular demand, there will be a mini course on coming shortly, without getting into too much detail on how to decide where the light and the dark areas go, remember that shiny and crystalline structures such as crystal clusters and cut gems only appear shiny to the eye if we established a high enough contrast. The highest imaginable contrast is black and white. So in my crystals and gemstones, I like to make sure that I have pure black and pure white visible. Those of you who have gone through my complete guide to coloring gemstones course, of course, already know all about that. Alrighty, I am now two hours and 20 minutes into this coloring. So far, we've done many layers of waxed colored pencil and the paper is still holding up well. We did our first layer with white charcoal and then we layered several types of magenta, several types of purple. We used blender pencils such as pale blue and white. We've added some creams and peaches, a little bit of blue, and we layered quite heavily with black on top of everything. I warned you in the beginning of the show about some smearing and smudging of wax pencils over white charcoal. I honestly have not experienced that on this page. Fingers crossed that it will stay that way. It has been very friendly and very enjoyable to create these gradients. The color saturation is spot on. Very vibrant colors. Once again, I am super pleased with how this paper produces vibrant colors. And it's that way over white charcoal or over the naked page. If you watch the two previous colorings that I've already done in this book, that is the fairy and the beetle. I did not do a lot of white charcoal priming, if at all, on those. I think on the beetle, I did some priming on just a few elements, but on the fairy, I didn't do any white charcoal priming at all. And the colors are so extremely vibrant. In fact, I was chatting with one of my students in the academy the other day about how curious it is that our coloring habit actually changes depending on whether we're coloring in a physical book or printed on loose leaf. And that, of course, comes down to paper quality and paper type and, of course, paper color. When I color my own artwork such as this, on Strathmore paper, which is one of my favorites, or cardstock, my recent obsession, my approach to coloring is naturally quite different. I start with a lot of white highlights, and then I build up my shadows, and the overall look and feel of my coloring is very, very different from what you're seeing on the screen right now. As I'm creating these colorings in the physical copy of the book for you these days, I am surprised myself. I am very pleasantly surprised, but still shocked at how vibrant these colors are because it's not my nature to paint and color in very vibrant colors. I, I actually tend to work with very muted colors, very simple, minimalistic color schemes. But this paper brings out the madman in me, the mad artist of color and vibrance. I'm not really sure why. It's, it's kind of an amazing experience to see yourself transform simply because you're working in a different environment on a different canvas. So on that note, all of you who own a physical copy of the book, I invite you to also consider getting the PDF version just so that you can experience that difference and the other way around. If you already own the PDF version and you would like to try something different, I would consider getting the printed version of the book as well just to see how different of an experience it is and how different the results are. 
And now I'm going to do the unthinkable. I'm going to paint the entire thing over all of these wax pencils with acrylic paint. For my acrylic paint, I'm using a very basic set of paints that I got on Amazon. I'm going to drop a link to that set in the video description so you guys can check it out as well. And these are the colors that I'm working with. I have black, deep purple, magenta, yellow ochre, lilac or violet, red, and white. How did I arrive at these colors? Well, these are all the same colors that I've used so far with my colored pencils. So I found the closest matches with my acrylic paint. I will need a paper towel, some brushes, and the scariest part of all, a small cup of water. We're actually going to paint this the same way that we would use acrylic paint on canvas. So far, so good. I am able to match the colors quite believably to what I already had established with my colored pencils. And the painting process itself feels very smooth. I am a huge fan of mixed media and specifically of using acrylic paint over colored pencil. In my latest art course, How to Draw Cats, the very final project that I demonstrate is my hyper-realistic drawing of a tiger, which becomes hyper-realistic and not just realistic in its final steps where I bring in acrylic paint over about six or eight hours of work of colored pencil. So for me, what acrylic paint does is it brings everything together in the end. It kind of sharpens the detail and it allows you to add highlights as light as you wish. If you've spent any time on this channel or if you're a member of my art academy, you know that I often color with Prismacolor pencils and I often bring in lighter colored pencils over darker colors that are already established on the paper to introduce some highlights. But you also know that you can't actually layer white Prismacolor pencils over magenta colors such as these and expect to have pure white. So when we do use exclusively pencils on the coloring, we do have to plan ahead a little bit and leave the areas that we ultimately want to be white as untouched as possible from the very start. The cool thing about bringing in acrylic paint right now is that I can add little glitter and glimmer effects and little reflections to my crystals even over the areas that are pure black. So that's extremely cool. The other cool thing is that you can change everything around completely. We talked about establishing a larger gradient on this composition from the top of the crystal cluster to the bottom. If you weren't able to establish that for some reason, now is the time that you can change things around. You can bring more pigment to the top of your cluster and lighten up the colors on the bottom. So acrylic paint allows you to come in and kind of airbrush the whole thing. Additionally, acrylic paint, no matter what brand of acrylic paint you're working with, is always going to be more vibrant. The colors will be stronger and cleaner than whatever brand of pencils you're working with. I love my Prismacolors. They're my absolute favorite brand right now at the time that I'm recording this. But even this very budget acrylic paint is creating stronger, cleaner effects. And that's just the nature of the medium itself. It has nothing to do with quality or brands. So if you want really vibrant effects, I highly recommend that you give this acrylic paint over wax pencils thing a chance. And yet another awesome thing about acrylic paint is that it dries pretty much instantaneously. So you don't have to wait for your page to dry before adding more and more effects. It takes just a few seconds to a minute for the brush stroke that you've applied to the page to dry, depending on how thick a layer of paint is and how much water you've added to it. Now, I'm not using a crazy amount of water here, but my brush is always damp on this, always, always. And of course, I'm cleaning it between the brush strokes so that my next color sample is pure. I am now three and a half hours into this coloring and I am still working with my acrylic paint, layering it on very thick over everything that I've already painted with white charcoal, with multiple layers of my colored pencils, and now a full layer of acrylic paint, not just white highlights, not just black detail, 
but everything that was already colored with colored pencils I've repainted yet again with an ultra thick layer of acrylic paint using water as well and the paper is still holding up as you can see there's no wrinkling there's no smudging it's kind of amazing. Now the trick here is that we're not applying our wet acrylic paint directly to the naked page. We're applying it over a layer of wax pencils. Do we need as many layers of wax pencils as I've established to apply our acrylic paint to this paper? No, we do not. You don't need to spend six hours on the coloring just to be able to use the paper in this book. Again, like I mentioned in the beginning of the show, this is the ultimate extreme test. So I'm going to demonstrate the ultimate extreme versions of approaching this coloring, but it gives you an idea of the things that you can do. So if you knew you were going to make this coloring in acrylic paint, then I would do the underpainting of the crystals with just two colors. For instance, a magenta and a white, just like we did on the very first underpainting layer. And that's more than enough to proceed with your acrylic paint. As always, I like to explore different angles, different sides to every single strategy. So what are the advantages to pre-coloring the entire crystal cluster in all of its glory, in all of its detail with colored pencils? Well, that way you don't really have to think about it when you're adding the acrylic paint effects. You're just following the steps that have already been done. You already know that it looks good. And if something doesn't look good, now is your chance to correct it and to change it. Whereas if you just establish your primary color base and come in with acrylic paint, you may still be a little lost in terms of decision making. Where do the light areas go? Where do the dark areas go? And not everyone's mind works that way. For some people, it's best to layer for hours. And that's me. I prefer to layer for hours. Again, there's no one way of doing this. And there's no right way of doing this. Everyone's approach is going to be a little bit different. My job here on the show is to demonstrate as many ways of approaching something as possible so that you can experiment with it on your end and see what works for you. Now that the crystals are done with white charcoal and colored pencils and layers upon layers of acrylic paint, I'm going to take the time and complete the background. I'm doing the background with colored pencils only. And I had a vision for it to be like a, like a really old scroll. So lots of reddish brown colors, lots of paper distortions. I'm using my Q-tip quite a bit to rub the pigment into the page. That also doesn't hurt it at all. I find that the Q-tip blending works beautifully on this paper. Very pleased with it. It's actually much easier to use the Q-tip blending trick directly on this paper with wax pencils directly on this paper than it is with wax pencils on cardstock. Cardstock is actually quite a bit more difficult to work on technically with colored pencils, though again, it depends on your preference and your coloring style. And for the background, I am also pushing the paper quite significantly with layers and blending. I'm going from darker to lighter to darker again to really rub that pigment into the page as much as I can. And still there's no damage. There's no damage to the surface of the page. There's no wrinkling whatsoever. That was the main concern really. It was the wrinkling because the pa this paper is not thick. Cardstock, even 65 pound cardstock is quite significant. Like you hold it in your hand and it's really thick paper. The Strathmore paper that I work on, that's uh, there's 65, 67, and 80 pound Strathmore paper that I really like. Also really, really thick paper. A lot of uh, coloring books that are published by houses such as Penguin feature books on very thick paper. And I think a lot of people just associate thick paper with high quality paper, but it's the tooth of the paper that's more important than its thickness. And the tooth of this paper is quite pleasant. There's a little bit of texture, not too much. It's not glossy. Glossy paper would be terrible paper. And that's not what we're dealing with here at all. I am extremely happy with the tooth of this paper, tooth meaning texture. So my main concern was actually the thickness of the paper. I thought that because this paper feels kind of flimsy to the touch, to be honest, I thought that, you know, doing this much layering, even the stuff that I'm doing on the background is pretty extreme with layering. That would at the very least wrinkle the page and not at all. It's good as new. 
coming up on five hours of this coloring, we now have our layer of white charcoal, our multiple layers of wax pencils on the crystals, our multiple layers of wax pencils on the background, an entire layer of acrylic paint on the crystals. Notice that now I'm coming in with tiny tweaks with colored pencils over my acrylic paint, so the madness continues. If you're just joining us, we're doing a paper test of this Amazon paper, and I'm obliged to mention that I don't actually care if you guys buy the printed book or the PDF book. Like I say time and time again, I offer my books in two formats for a reason, because everyone has their own preference. If I really hated this paper and I felt like it was inappropriate for coloring, that it didn't do my artwork justice, that it wouldn't offer you guys the best possible experience, I would not print my books with KDP Amazon. And the reason that I'm doing this test isn't to convince you to buy the book, it's to convince you that that perhaps if you bought in into the whole Amazon paper sucks rumor that's going on around the coloring community, that perhaps you're missing out on some really amazing experiences. There's one last thing we must do for our ultimate paper test, and that is to bring in a marker. I am going to bring in a black marker. I am really into outlines these days. You know, this is line art. This is very illustrative, very cartoony, kind of um, more like a graphic design or video game kind of an illustration. Overall, this is a fantasy piece, and I feel like it will benefit greatly from a thick black outline just on the crystal cluster, simply because the background is already a little bit busy. So fingers crossed, this is the first time that I'm doing this. As I'm doing it, I have no idea what's going to happen, what's going to happen to my page, if I'm going to ruin this six hour illustration, six hour coloring, but here it goes, a jet black marker and we're going to apply it to the outlines, holding our breath the entire time. <laughs> so while that's happening, the show is obviously coming to an end. This is the final step. So thank you everyone so much for coming to the live premiere of this. It's always loads of fun to be in the live chat with you guys. If you're watching this as a rerun, I hope you enjoyed the show as well. Please remember to give this video the thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you have any questions or comments at all, there is the comment section below the video as well. I do hope that you found this show interesting and educational and that you learned a lot, not just about how to color crystals and how to use mixed media, but also about the quality of this highly underrated paper. So I do hope that you give this book a chance. I've been popping up little QR codes throughout the entire show. There are also direct links in the video description and in the pinned comments underneath this video. So go ahead, go grab your copy of the book. And again, I can't promote one over the other PDF or a printed book. I have always been a huge fan of PDF downloads just because of the option to be able to print on any color paper but I've been pleasantly surprised by coloring in this book. So far, my experience has been amazing. Now the black outline is done. Drum roll, please. Let's see how it turned out. Let's turn that page and see how we did. Six hours of intense layering with four different media, white charcoal, wax colored pencils, acrylic paint with water, and finally a black magic marker. We'll take our protective paper away. And as you can see, the back of this page is perfectly clean. There's no bleed through. There's no warping on the page and there's no color bleed through. That's quite extraordinary for paper that feels so thin to the touch. And as I twist and turn the page, you can see as well that there's no warping on the texture whatsoever. And as I run my fingers over the coloring, there's no pigment left on my fingers and there's no smudging happening on the page either. There is a little bit of shine to our crystals because we used acrylic paint, but I think that's kind of cool because crystals are shiny. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, kids of all ages, crystals in four different media on Amazon paper.
If you had any doubts about the quality of this paper before, I hope this video has changed your mind and you will give this book a shot. Thank you again so much for watching everyone. Remember that our next show is going to be on Valentine's Day and we'll be doing silk and rose petals also in this book. I love you guys. I'll see you next week. Bye.